Dear openers of this meeting, for Basel Councillor Dr. Engelberger, for the University of Basel Professor and Rector Schenkowicki, for the European Commission Elke Anklam, thank you to be here, and Dr. Haflicker for the Swiss Confederation. We are grateful that you come today for this opening. Dear speakers, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. You know, we are grateful that you come because without you, there would be no summit. And the other point is that we felt that we have to tell you about what we did nine years ago Patrick and I went to see an attorney, and on the wall where we had to wait, you saw that. So we took a decision. It was be damned if you do it, be damned if you don't do it. And what we did, we did it. We, were, we felt prepared for an adventure to sail nine years until today to see today a neutral platform which is only possible again if experts, people from all over the world, this year 497 people from 36 countries have taken the decision to be in Basel for three days with us. We have seen during this nine years many, 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 many new topics of high interest and always tried to put them together in a way that the clinic is up front, clinical disease to be seen and to be found out in what debate we can achieve progress. Now, We have seen many horizons, also Horizon 2020, and we have tried to come forward and always felt that telecommunication is nice, internet is nice, but what really true makes innovation is if you meet, if you create trust between each other, and if you work together face to face. Innovation is something that happens. You cannot innovate. Innovation happens when people come together, make new projects, cooperation, and go to the forward, in our case, to the benefit of the patient. I wish you a fruitful conference and hope that if there's anything you have to say uh, about wanting more or of something needs, let us know. We will try to have you as our guests in a good way and in a good time. Thanks. Oh, May I ask uh, Elke Anklam to speak? Thank you. Dear opening committee, especially dear Beat and dear ladies and gentlemen, it's my greatest pleasure to be here and a great honor to be here. Um, you may have seen in the former years my colleague Rudolf Strohmeyer, and he has just moved to another position within the European Commission, so he just became director, director general of another director general. And so I thought when I got the invitation now to come here, I thought this is more than timely because I belong to the Euro European Commission's Joint Research Centre, and this is the in-house scientific service of the European Commission. So we are the other Directorate General. Rudolf Strumeyer is the is from the, was from the Directorate General, giving out the money for projects, and I belong to the Directorate General doing the in-house science. And we will have a major reorganisation from 1st July onwards in our organisation, and I will become responsible also for activities in the area of nanomedicine, regulatory nanomedicine. So it's my utmost pleasure to be here. It's my first time, and I'm very happy. So um, this conference is really important to um, explore the potential 
of nanomedicine. And because today, as you all know, we have many challenges. We do not have only in the moment very high political challenges within the European Union, but of course we have a lot of societal challenges we are facing. And the health and well-being is, is a very important factor in our daily lives. And um, if you think about it, we, oh, we now become older. It is an aging population. We make part of it. We all would like to die healthily, so we have many, many efforts. You know, medicine plays an important role in this. It is estimated that people reaching 100 years of age will be tenfold in 2050, and people above 65 will double in 2050. This means this aging population, of course, is great. We stay more fit. We may stay more in work. But of course, this will also shift a bit the focus in our health issues, illnesses and deaths, because we will move, and we see this trend already, very much from infectious and parasitic diseases to non-communicable diseases and chronic diseases. And we see again that antimicrobial resistance is one of the topics and challenges we are facing today. This requires a much more quicker action than today, maybe even. Nanomedicine has a great potential to tackle many of these topics. So um, we have to, um, we have also to not, not to forget that nanomedicine is offering a lot of economic benefits because if you're looking into the people working in this field, we know that hundreds of small and medium-sized companies are engaged in this sector and they add a lot of value and have quality employment for people. Um, additionally, also the spillover effects of the research intensive activity can benefit all areas of society and one important aspect is not only to develop great tools which come into application but also to translate them into good tools. So the European Union and especially the European Commission fully acknowledge the potential of this uh, um, field, nanomedicine, to create jobs and to generate growth. And this can be clearly seen in the programs of the European Union and the Union EU's framework program for research and technological development. And from 2007 to 2013, there were 152 projects financed on nanomedicine. And the total budget was over 600 million euro. And the more important uh, thing is that we had more than 400 industrial partners and both from small and large enterprises participating in these projects. Now we already heard Horizon 2020 and uh, the scope of the current Horizon 2020 program further reaffirms the EU commitment in the area of nanomedicine. As a result, now already more than 100 million euro have been invested and uh, we have flagship projects and I'm sure there are many of these presented in this conference and uh, for example, these support the translation from the bench to the bedside. And these are, for example, the European Nanomedicine Characterization Laboratory, Inatrans or Nanopilot, but many, many more. And these are just excellent examples for the commitment of the EU in this field. And uh, furthermore, also the industry, the research community and the European Commission embarked on a mission to design a concept for a European industry-driven initiative on emerging and strategic technologies for healthcare. This is Esther. Moreover, and I mentioned already, my organization, the Joint Research Center, is also becoming more and more active in the field of nanomedicine to support member states in harmonization approaches and in the area of standardization of technologies. Um, all of these, of course, we have many, many challenges left out there, many initiatives, but still a lot to do, which is good, and this will guarantee the continuation of this great conference, certainly. And uh, because we have still something to do to cross the valley of that, uh, death in order to bridge the gap from the laboratory proof to, um, of concept to a successful demonstration in a real operational development. And I'm sure you all work very hard on this already, but we need to proceed further. And we need to address shortcomings, and for that we need a multidisciplinary approach. This is the sign and the good demonstration of multidisciplinarity in this conference, not only multinational, but also multidisciplinary. 
And of course, because we need, and as Beat said, it is good to meet in person, we need to have a close collaboration of scientists, among others, between biologists, physicists, chemists, and clinicians. And of course, another issue is really to access to venture capital, because also, therefore, economists need to come on board. Um, it is certainly also important that we need to have a very good definition of what it means. And this is a big debate within the European uh, Union in the recent years. What is a nanomaterial, for example, and the limited standard nomenclature? And also, of course, we need reference materials in all fields to make sure that whatever we apply to patients, whatever we measure in patients, fluids, etc., is right. So this is a constant challenge for the legislators and, of course, to the European Commission as such. So the problem is that sometimes the rate of new product development is faster than the regulatory process is coming sometimes a bit behind. And uh, that can sometimes create problems. So we need to come very closely in line and, um, and come up with these issues. Because we should not forget that, especially in the European Union, I have the feeling we have more a society of fear and maybe less in the area of nanomedicine because it shows clearly benefits, but in the whole area of nanotechnology, we have to overcome such concerns of safety. We need to look very clearly into safety assessments and ensure that we have the safety by design approach for nanotechnology. So this conference is really a great opportunity to openly debate all of the future of nanomedicine and to see what is the state of art today and to fulfill the enormous potential we have for the society. So I would like to end here. I would like to wish you very fruitful next days to come. A lot of success in this challenging but very promising field. Thank you very much. Herr Regierungsrat Engelberger. Magnificent, dear Professor Schenker, President of the University of Basel, dear Dr. Anklam, dear Dr. Hafliger, dear Dr. Löffler, dear Professor Homziker, dear Dr. Gutmanns, dear guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am impressed with the outstanding academic excellence gathered in this room, and I apologize that for reasons of timekeeping, I was unable to address any single of you by name. You certainly would have de deserved it as well. I am delighted to welcome you here today on behalf of the government of the canton uh, of Basel-Stadt. And I am particularly pleased that you have chosen Basel as the venue for your conference. We are honored that we, honored, we are honored to have you uh, as uh, our guests during the European Summit for Clinical Nanomedicine and Targeted Medicine. You are meeting to share your expertise and experience at an international level. That is very much the Basel way, where everyone is accustomed to thinking, living and working in a cross-border European manner due to the close neighborhood with both uh, France and Germany. This year's motto of the CLINAM conference is enabling technologies for personalized medicine. Undoubtedly, this is addressing one of the great main topics in the current discussions about the future of medicine. As patients, all of us deserve a targeted, specific, personalized response in medical treatment. And as payers, we simply cannot afford more untargeted medicine. So clearly, personalization is the way to go in order to both enable progress in medicine and to ascertain its funding in the future. Obviously, the call for personalized medicine is raising difficult challenges and questions. For example, how the safety and efficacy of personalized treatments are tested and ensured. The regulatory authorities have a difficult task in balancing progress and safety issues. 
CLINAM has covered this aspect many times, and at this year's conference there is again a high-level panel discussion on the subject tomorrow, entitled The Regulatory Authorities' Voice. I welcome that CLINAM is providing a forum to present and discuss these topics. Ladies and gentlemen, every idea, every new concept, every new trend offers new opportunities for companies. Often the first ones to grasp them are startup companies. Basel is one of the largest life science clusters in Europe. More than 20,000 20, highly qualified people work and live here. It is, some, uh, it is home not only to some of the largest uh, pharma companies, but also to quite a few smaller ones. This unique environment is further enhanced by outstanding research institutions such as the University of Basel, with its faculties dedicated to life sciences bundled in the so-called Biozentrum, or the Friedrich Mirscher Institute uh, and uh, ETH Zurich with its department Biosystems, Science and Engineering. All of these institutions, remarkably, will have new facilities in place by the year 2020. Success needs collaboration and an active network. Basel has a unique culture of exchange. Last year, our innovation agency organized 40 different technology and networking events with over 3,000 participants in the fields of life sciences, medtech, and nanotechnology alone. This provides for a very interactive setting in which to learn, to make connections, and to grow. To improve this environment even further, the innovation agency uh, was merged with the Economic Promotion Agency uh, at the end of last year under the new name of BaselArea.Swiss. The joint operation is now up and running. Altogether, the companies, research institutes and the innovation network offer a unique environment for companies to use these resources to grow and to be successful. Last year, 16 new companies in the field of life sciences, including chemistry, either moved to Basel or were founded here. Ladies and gentlemen, medical progress is steadily advancing and patients also want to benefit from it. Healthcare in Switzerland is one of the largest sectors of the economy and not only uh, pave is the way to well-being and good health, but also generates jobs and thus prosperity. New products, techniques and treatments may drive up healthcare costs in the short term. But the long-term outcome is different because innovation is improving medical care, creating added value for patients. This has always been the pathway of medical progress and it is a crucial factor behind the steady and sustained increase both in life expectancy and life quality. Take antibiotics, for example. Any estimates as to how many lives have been saved since the antibiotic effect of penicillin was discovered which would re reach dizzling orders of magnitude. Penicillin had to be discovered thanks to research. While the innovation of this antibiotic represented a quantum leap in medicine, medical progress is also driven by gradual improvements. We see this, for example, in cancer. There has been a huge improvement in the treatment of cancer through many, many little steps. The new cancer report in Switzerland, for instance, shows that while the incidence of cancer has risen due to aging, the mortality risk for the individual patient has been significantly reduced thanks to new medicines and new treatments. Or let us think of personalized medicine. Here, in addition to the clinical picture, the integration of further knowledge about Genetic, social or behavioural aspects will allow to dramatically improve the targeting and thus the effectiveness of medical treatments. This will reduce costs in the healthcare system while patients will be spared unnecessary treatments. And let us not forget the field of medical technology innovation. The whole area of minimal invasive surgery or even nanomedicine, the name giving discipline for this conference. In all these areas, high research and development costs will pay off over time. Because in return, diseases can be treated more quickly and more effectively. Indirect costs that result from work absence, for example, are reduced. 
and there will be a decline in the overall cost of hospital stays. Investments in healthcare make sense, not only because of the increase in life expectancy and life quality. They also have economic benefits and ultimately promote the growth of our economy. This is why I'm very glad to be here at CLINAM. I am delighted that you are meeting here for what is already the ninth uh, CLINAM conference in order to give further input, further impetus to this progress. Ladies and gentlemen, on this note, I would like to congratul congratulate the organizers, Dr. Beat Löffler and Professor Patrick Hunziker. It is thanks to their tireless and persistent efforts, not only that the CLINAM conference was initiated in the first place, but that it has become a remarkable event that, is to, that it is today with probably 500 eminent scientists and experts meeting for three days here in Basel. I was now limiting my remarks to the field of medicine and innovation. I'm going to talk about, to talk about our great museums next time. Just one recommendation. If you find time, please take a look at the Museum of Fine Arts, the Basel Kunstmuseum. It just reopened and inaugurated a great new building that you definitely should have seen uh, by the time that you will have to leave Basel. I trust that you will enjoy your time here with us. I hope uh, you will enjoy uh, the conference and I hope you will come back for next year's anniversary, Klinam, or even better, uh, earlier than that uh, for another visit later this year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Schenkowicki for Basel University. Dear Minister of Health, Dr. Lukas Engelberger from Basel, from the Canton of Basel Stadt. Dear Dr. Aklam from the European Commission. Dear Dr. Hevliger from the State Secretariat from Bern. He is responsible for the research in Switzerland. Dear Professor Löffler, dear Dr. Löffler, I'm sorry, <laughs> I promoted you. Um, Dear Professor Hunziker and dear Dr. Gutmanns. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, colleagues and friends, guests and visitors, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me the greatest of pleasure to welcome our Swiss and international guests to the ninth Klinum Conference. As president of the oldest university in Switzerland, it is a particular honor that you have chosen our city for your conference and that our university is associated with the newest developments in this groundbreaking new field. This is the ninth conference in the series of conferences in clinical nanomedicine that was initiated in Basel with the first Klima in 2008. The first mention of clinical nanomedicine in the scientific literature probably predated this meeting by only three or four years, indicated the truly prophetic and groundbreaking nature of that first conference. This year, the CLINAM runs in the same week as Swiss Nanoscience Conference, a full week devoted to nanoscience, nanomedicine and nanotechnology here in Basel. The University of Basel has been a center for nanoscale science since the beginning of this exciting research field. In 2001, we became the leading house of the National Center of Compet for Competence in Research in Nanoscale and Science, and Basel is home to the Swiss Nanoscience Institute since 2006. In 2014, the University of Basel identified nanoscale science as one of its five focal research areas. Basel contributes as a major player and innovation leader to the excellent reputation of Switzerland in nanoscience and nanotechnology. The University of Basel has also identified life sciences as another major focal area and in the area of clinical nanomedicine, the combination of nanoscale science and life sciences reaches its natural translational home. What is nanomedicine? In one sense, the vast majority of modern medicine can fall in this category. However, the main theme of this ninth clean meeting serves 
well to define what we are to understand by nanomedicine. Key areas in the cleanup meeting are disease mechanism, mechanisms and personalized medicine, regenerative medicine, novel therapeutic and diagnostic approaches, active and passive targeting, targeted delivery, accurate technology, and nanotoxicology. Nanomedicine in particular and nanoscience in general are true interdisciplinary areas of activity and CLEANOM provides an annual meeting place in which the disciplines to share their common endeavors. Today, CLEANOM is well established as a unique forum where scientists from academia and industry meet with clinicians, basic scientists, government and entrepreneurs. This meeting has, as always, an astonishing number of high quality speakers. I find it interesting that two of the major speakers, Stephen Hill and Gerd Binning, exemplify the close relationship between technology and methodology development and clinical nanomedicine. The tools that they are identified with are exactly the tools that they are the drivers of the nano revolutions. I hope you agree that Basel is an excellent and unique place for this meeting. Basel has a long-standing tradition as an excellent research site. It is one of the worldwide leading centers for the life science and the university is one of the innovation drivers in the region. The University of Basel, founded in 1460, is the oldest in Switzerland and has a tradition of recognized excellence. Notable honored scientists include the Bernoullis, Euler, and more recently the Nobel Prize winner Werner Arber and Thaddeus Reichstein. Only a few weeks ago, Christoph Gerber, one of our speakers, received the prestigious Kavli Prize for the creation of the first atomic force microscope, the tool which more than any other enabled the development of modern nano size. Is he here, Professor Gerber? Not, not yet, but we will give him a warm applause for the prize. <laughs> Accordingly, it is now a great pleasure for me to open the ninth cleanup meeting. This conference offers a unique chance for all participants to cross borders. Here, clinical scientists and hospital doctors meet physicists, biologists and chemists to discuss their science. Those involved in basic research meet colleagues who are involved with delivery to patients. Scientists, scientists from industry meet colleagues from clinics and academia and people from administration get an insight into life in laboratories. The diversity of participants is the key to the success of CLINUM. I hope that you will all profit from the diversity, from the exchange with your colleagues and from discussion with experts outside your own field. I wish all participants a stimulating inspire and inspiring conference. Thank you and I look forward to welcoming you all at CLINAM 10 next year. Herr Dr. Hafliger for State Secretariat. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Swiss State Secretariat for Education, uh, Research and Innovation, I am pleased to welcome you all to Basel. I extend my greetings first to the preceding speakers, Dr. Anklam, Dr. Engelberger and Professor Schenkerwicki. Their commitment and support for this meeting is very much appreciated by the federal authorities. Then it is an honor to greet the many prominent scientists who will present seminal lectures, especially, of course, the Nobel laureates, Professor Stephen Hill and Gerd Binning. The participating international and Swiss scientists, but also regulatory authorities from across the world appreciate the CLINAM Summit as a very interactive yearly meeting. Clearly they see the cutting edge research and the very broad spectrum of clinical application presented at this conference as having a big potential impact for medicine. 
the numerous participants from private industry, the ambitious high-tech startup companies, as well as the participation at cleaning of more than 20 exhibitors, are a good indication that tangible progress is already a reality. A special emphasis of this summit is on the potential of nanomedicine for personalized medicine. Following the experts, personalized medicine is opening up completely new dimensions, which represent to quite some extent uncharted territory also for public administration. Switzerland is embracing the challenge of personalized medicine. Over the last few years, we have been building up infrastructures like the Swiss Clinical Trial Organization and increasingly been involving the Swiss National Science Foundation. Investigator-initiated clinical trials will receive substantial funds starting this year. Now, the Swiss federal government has submitted detailed plans to the parliament for the next four years. From 2017 and following four years, we have earmarked substantial funding for a national personalized initiative, personalized medicine initiative. The lead and measure responsibility will be with the Swiss Academy of Medical Sciences. In the first step, a priority will be to strengthen bioinformatics and biocomputing at Swiss university and hospitals. And in this context, we will, be, we will establish a national data coordination center based especially concerning clinical data on the interoperability of different local information systems at Swiss hospitals involved in clinical research. Switzerland intends to promote actively novel scientific fields. The support for this summit by the State Secretary for Education, Research and Innovation is a part of this strategy. Fields involved in nanomedicine, including medical technologies and microtechnology, will be, we think, important building blocks, important building blocks in the development towards personalized medicine. CLINAM started as a small but ambitious Swiss initiative to create a private non-profit foundation to promote nanomedicine and build an international cooperation network. The organizers and founders of the European Foundation for Clinical Nanomedicine some 10 years ago, Dr. Löffler and Professor Hunziker, have established this meeting as an important yearly summit for the research community. CLINAM has become, let's say, a hub for the translational process from scientific, scientific discovery to the development of drugs and devices for diagnosis and therapies. It is today the summit for a global nanomedicine and related fields network. The CLINAM conference in its actual configuration is already a considerable success at the international level. It has generated many cooperation efforts at the European level involving novel technologies, de technological developments, nanomedicine centers, and several startup companies. The strong interdisciplinary character and the mix of clinicians, biochemists, physicists, pharmacologists, engineers, representatives of industry and regulatory authorities from all continents make CLINEM to a unique platform. We as State Secretary for Innovation, uh, for Research and Innovation are proud that we have contributed to make CLINAM to what it is today. When I recently told the organizers that this conference has in our view again substantially won compared to the last one, they answered, what would be a conference and the best concept if not all these great scientists, engineers, regulators, and stakeholders from industry would be generous 
to give their time and to actively participate. Well, they are right. In this sense, we could say, and Professor uh, Dr. Uh, Loeffler told it, you all are the summit. And with this, ladies and gentlemen, I will stop. I will close the official opening part. It's time to work. I wish you all a stimulating conference and hope you will make progress in shaping the upcoming measure shifts in medical research. Thank you very much. <laughs>